Hello, everybody. What up, SF Video Tech? So I'm Dylan Javeri. I'm the co-founder and CTO at Crowdcast. And today, I'll be talking to you about broadcasting WebRTC over low latency Dash. Um, the other en engineer that uh, had a ginormous impact on this project was Matt, their full stack engineering lead. Uh, he's not here tonight. He lives in Canada. but. Um, the two of us have been working on this project for the last six or seven months, and I'm really excited to tell you about it today because it was a really awesome project for us and really made a big impact for the company. Uh, some of you might be familiar with Crowdcast, but in case you're not, uh, this is what it looks like. So we have like a user-facing uh, consumer product, and these three people in the middle are basically on a real-time WebRTC call having a conversation. You can think of it like a Google Hangout or a Zoom call, three of them chatting. But what makes Crowdcast different is that conversation is being broadcast out to a whole audience of people. And that audience could be hundreds or thousands of people that are all, all watching in real time and interacting with the people on stage. So the center part we call the stage. And you can see there's a chat bar on the right. Everyone in the audience can submit questions. Those questions can be upvoted. And there's a lot of um, interaction between the audience and the people on stage. And as part of that, um, one of the kind of constraints we're dealing with at Crowdcast is we want the live stream to be as low latency as possible. And that's because of how interactive, the, all the interactive features we have. It doesn't really work well when you have a three people talking about something and then the chat is delayed 30 seconds and you have people reacting in the chat and stuff like that. So we want to get as low latency as possible. So that's what we're dealing with. Um, so this is the project we started about six or seven months ago. And the kind of origin story behind this project is, like most great software projects, this started when I was on my honeymoon. And I don't know if any of you have had that experience, but basically I was away having a great time on my honeymoon, and then Math sends me, a, I checked Slack, and Math had sent me a message. He said, I know you're busy, but I got this really cool thing I'm working on. This is super cool. I'm super excited about it. Check it out. So um, still had a great honeymoon, but I was periodically had some late nights checking Slack and trying to keep up with what was going on. And then as soon as I got back, we really just hit the ground running with it. So the goal of this project was to, we wanted to convert that WebRTC call you, ha you see with you know, three or four people uh, having a conversation. And we want that to convert that into like a single low latency stream that can be consumed by thousands of concurrent viewers. And the main motivations for doing this is um, when you have sort of three or four WebRTC streams, you can serve those WebRTC streams to a bunch of people in an audience, but it takes a lot of bandwidth, and it ends up getting really expensive when you have like hundreds or thousands of viewers. So that's what we're going for. So the very first kind of proof of concept that Math did, um, he said, hey, so we're already taking these WebRTC streams and showing them in the browser. So what if we could just run headless Chrome, load up a web page that we control, so that'd be like a crowdcast.io slash something web page, load that up in the browser, and what if we could take the audio and video from that browser and like pipe that into FFmpeg or pipe that into something so that we could compose it, transcode it, and then broadcast it out? Like, What if we could do that? So I ran some experiments. We'd kind of been following headless Chrome for some time, and, um, and basically, basically got it working. Um, the main reasons we, cho we chose Headless Chrome is uh, we wanted to kind of avoid ingesting the individual WebRTC streams and laying them out ourselves. Um, that our, our, for our team, we come like from more of a web development background, so we're really comfortable working with CSS and JavaScript, and we want to make a lot of interactions, overlays, picture-in-picture, um, -picture, all this kind of stuff. So like we're already doing this in the browser, so what if we can just run that headless Chrome, and if we're able to get the video and audio out and, and, and have it look good, let's, let's try that first. Uh, so after one or two months, it took a while, we had to tweak, tweak it a lot. This is kind of, uh, we had the first two pieces of this, this taken care of. We had headless Chrome running, recording a web page, we're taking the audio and video, recording the audio and video out of that web page, and we're able to pipe that into FFmpeg. And at first, we're just seeing, writing it to a file and seeing, OK, what does this look like? And we're actually able to get it to have a high enough frame rate, good enough audio, it sounded good. We're like, sweet. We, this, this looks like it can actually be possible. So now that we have that, those, that stream coming into FFmpeg, 
uh, how are we going to broadcast that out at a, at a low latency? So what we started looking at is uh, Dash and CMath. So um, that's what we started playing around with next. So we're saying if FFmpeg can just output to a localhost node server and upload the Dash playlist and the Dash segment files, um, let's see if we can get that working. So I'm going to jump in a little bit to how Dash and CMath works. So uh, essentially what you have here, this browser here represents a player. And the player is going to just long pull the manifest file. And every time it hits the manifest file, a little piece of data in the manifest file will change. And it basically tells the browser or the player uh, what the URLs are for each individual segment files. So for example, the browser will pull the manifest file, and then it'll ask the server. Um, and ULL here where stands for ultra low latency. So that's when we're trying to get to like a three second latency with Dash. So the, so the player says, ask the ULL server, says, give me segment one. And the ULL server is going to say, oh, I actually don't have segment one. But I'm actually right now in the process of receiving segment one. So I'm actually right now, FFmpeg is in the process of uploading segment one to me, to the server. And I don't have the full file yet, but I can kind of give it to you in pieces. And that's how the ULL server works. Um, so I just want to make sure I get that point across. So when, I, when, when we first started playing around with this, I'm like, wow. So you're telling me that a server, a, a, a player, can ask a server for a file, and then the server's going to say, oh, I don't actually have that file, but here it is anyway. I'm going like, to kind of stream it to you as I'm receiving it. And this was just kind of mind-blowing for us. I'm like, wow, can, does this actually work? And this was pretty much my reaction. Like, did, does this really work? I think as a software engineer, it's good to carry a healthy degree of skepticism. It's like, let's, I want to actually see this work. So let's uh, take a look. We made a little quick demo here. It's a Node.js server. It's about 230 lines. And it's that ULL server. What it, it's going to just expose an endpoint for, um, for FFmpeg to upload segments to. And it's going to expose an endpoint for a player to download segments and download the manifest. So let's start that off. So we see the server's running. Uh, it's running on localhost that on that port. And the way we made this, and this is on GitHub, so you can, you know, if you don't believe me, you can run it yourself. <laughs> um, so the way this works is we're just going to send a post request to, uh, to start. OK, so that right now is going to start in FFmpeg process. And so that just kicked off an S FFmpeg process. So FFmpeg is now running. And it's uploading the manifest.mpd file. And it's uploading the individual segment files. Everybody with me so far? You can see segment 1's been uploaded, segment 2, segment 3. And as FFmpeg keeps running, it's going to keep, keep uploading those files. So now, let's take a look at what this content looks like. So load up this dash player and uh, point to this local host and low latency mode is enabled. So let's load this content and let's see what content is being uh, transcoded right now. Cool. So this is what's happening right now. This is live. FFmpeg is, is running in that other process, uploading the manifest file and uploading the segments. And this is the this is the content that is being transcoded. So we had the encoder time right there. Let's look at what kind of latency. So this is real time right now. So you can see we're getting about a two, three second latency um, end to end with this, with this example. OK, now let's um, dive a little deeper. So you can see right here, there's a log every time a, f a, a segment file gets uploaded. And there's a log every time um, when the download's complete. So if we just dive in here and look at this network traffic, let's see what's going on. And um, when you're looking at these uploads, you can see the, the numbers of the segments. You can see 16, 17. Now, right now, you can see the browser is downloading 18. And it's actually downloading 18 before 18 had fully been uploaded. So now it's downloading 20. And you can see right here, 20 hasn't even been uploaded yet. So to my surprise, this actually worked. Um, we, it, it is actually working. We have a, a situation here where the browser is able to request a file from the server and actually 
download that file before the server even has, has that full file. And the way this works is over like HTTP chunked transfer encoding. OK, cool. So that's like a really, really small demo. And now the next thing is like cool story, right? Like that's going to work. You have, if you have a Docker container, you're running FFmpeg, you're outputting to this little node server, that's going to work for like a very small number of viewers. As soon as like 10 viewers connect to that, that's gonna, it's going to bring down the whole process and it's not going to work. So, and, but we need to broadcast this to thousands of viewers concurrently. So how are we going to do that? Um, how are we going to put a CDN in front of this? Now, normally if you just kind of have a static origin with static files, it's really easy to put a CDN in front of this. But this gets a little more complicated. So the setup we have, so let's say we create a CNAME record ULL for ultra low latency, ull.crowdcast.io, point that to a CDN. If the CDN has a cache miss, uh, how's it going to know what origin to go to? Um, we basically are running a Docker container for every single Crowdcast event. So those are spinning up dynamically. Each of those Docker containers is behind a different host. And inside that Docker container, we're running Chrome, we're running FFmpeg, and we're running that, that ULL server. So how are we going to figure, how's the CDN going to know what origin to actually hit? So the, the solution we came up with is we basically have to have one layer in between, which we call the ULL proxy. So what happens is when the, the, the ULL proxy is the origin for the CDN. So when the CDN has a cache miss, it's going to request it from the ULL proxy. And that proxy server is just going to be a little bit of code, which is going to, based on a unique ID in the actual URL path, it's going to base, it, it can take that ID, map that ID to the right host, and then it'll know which Docker container it needs to route the request to. Which, and those Docker containers are all running on different hosts. Uh, that makes sense? So. Um, that's how we're going to route the request. And the ULL proxy code basically looks like this. Um, really simple. It's just going to strip an ID out of the URL. Um, on line 51 there, we're going to pass in that ID and get the right host. And then on line 55, you can see we're just using request.pipe and piping the response. And that's just going to proxy the request um, to, to, the right, uh, to the right host and stream the response back to the and pipe the response back to the client. Uh, so that's pretty much what we did. And we actually took this, we actually have this, UL, uh, originally we had like a kind of a set of web servers ser acting as this ULL proxy. We actually took this one step further and we're running those on like the edge data centers using uh, Cloudflare workers. So it's like a little bit of JavaScript code. We're actually running those on the edge, edge workers, which are super fast, made to handle like billions of requests. So th those are really stable and kind of one less piece of infrastructure for us to manage. So. Uh, how's this been working? Basically, we've had this whole setup, and we have, we have the same setup I just showed you, but with regular HLS, and we've been running that for the past uh, couple months almost. And that we have kind of like short segments, about a 15 second latency. We're getting like a 97% cache hit rate. We're doing like about 90 terabytes per month. And we've had 8, 000, oh, around 8,000 like real live production events go through that. Three nines of success rate. Like to do a little better, but that's pretty good. Um, and then this dash CMF solution that I just showed you, we're seeing that we're running that in production. We have about three second latency for that end to end. Uh, we're testing that right now behind a feature flag, and so far everything is working like better than expected. And we're just kind of polishing up the player before we kind of roll it out to 100%. So, so here, so basically what we're doing to capture Chrome, we're using a media recorder API. Uh, Chrome, Chrome exposed a media recorder API, and we're capturing those basically raw WebM chunks piping those through a web socket into a node server, into a, no a node process. That node process is taking that, uh, those raw WebM chunks and piping them into standard in for the FFmpeg process. And you can boot up FFmpeg to just ingest everything coming into standard in. Uh, I didn't compare that like on a technical level of how they're doing it, but um, you actually roll back the clock on Crowdcast. The very first original version of Crowdcast before I even joined, it actually was sort of a, it, it was like an embedded Hangouts on Air, and we basically had like a Hangouts on Air plugin that would launch in, in the Hangouts on Air and then sort of pass that data through and then embed the iframe into the. So that was kind of the very first version of Crowdcast. But um, yeah, they've since kind of gotten rid of that project. So I haven't, I haven't been able to see how they're doing that. Oh, the new bottleneck to go lower? Um, it's a good, good question. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how much lower you can get because, I mean, the. Like the we're, yeah, pretty much the. It's pretty much going to be constrained by the HTTP chunking. So. Um, and you need some amount of buffer in the player. So 
Um, I, I haven't seen any other sort of like HLS or Dash solution that can get to sort of like one second. Um, maybe they're out there, but I haven't seen it. So the multiple Docker instances is basically we have one Docker container for every single event that is happening. So when someone goes live and starts a broadcast, we spin up that Docker container, spin up the headless Chrome, and then do that whole, go through that whole setup. So the, each of these represents a different Crowdcast event that's happening. And the other question? Oh, the bit rate. Yeah, so the people who are broadcasting, it's WebRTC, so it's like a pretty low bit rate. I, I forget what we set it to, but it's not, it's not super high. <laughs> Thanks, <so much. laughs>